Hi, I'm Tyler, and today we're going to be talking a little bit about plant and animal defenses. But first, we need to think about what plants and animals need to survive. So think for a few moments about what you or perhaps what your pet needs to survive. Okay, now that you've had a, a chance to think about it and maybe have a few ideas, let's bring them together with an example. Take a look at this moose. It's one of my favorite animals and one of the largest species in the deer family. So what are the things, some of the things that it might need to survive? Well, one thing that moose needs is water to drink. Moose particularly love hanging out in the water and they're very rarely found very far away from water. So they need that water to drink and survive. Another thing that moose need to survive is food. And here you can see a couple examples of moose eating some of their favorite foods. So there you have a moose eating uh, a willow branch or some plants that grow in the water. Or in the case in that picture on the right, you have a moose eating a pumpkin. Now, generally they don't eat pumpkins off your front porch, but moose do need food to survive and they will eat what's available to them. So another thing that moose need to survive is to, be, to avoid becoming food themselves. So just like moose need food to survive, wolves also need to eat. And wolves occasionally will try to eat moose. So part of survival for the moose is not becoming food for wolves. Now there are many, thing, many more things that animals need to survive, but we're gonna focus for a bit on how they need to avoid being eaten themselves. And how they avoid becoming food for different animals is through different types of what we call defenses. With our wolf and moose example, most of the time, wolves are unable to capture and eat moose. And why is that? Well, part of the way that moose can defend themselves from wolves is simply by being very large. Because they're so big, wolves have a tough time capturing moose. Moose are also able to use their hooves and antlers to keep wolves away from them, as you can see in these pictures. So even though wolves want to eat moose, Moose have many defenses that allow them to survive most of the time. And it turns out that there's a lot of ways that plants and animals use to defend themselves from being eaten. So let's take, for example, this cactus. What do you think this cactus uses as a defense against being eaten? I'll give you a few moments to think about that. So if you were thinking that the spines on the cactus prevent predators from eating it, you'd be correct. So in this picture, this cow might be really wanting to eat this cactus, but as soon as it gets a mouthful of those spines, it's probably going to decide that this isn't worth it and try to find something easier to eat. So in this case, those spines are an effective defense against being eaten for that cactus. So now let's take a look at another example. Here we have a turtle. So what do you think this turtle can use as a defense against being eaten? Again, I'll give you a couple minutes to think about this. So there are a handful of defenses, but one of them is the turtle's very hard shell. If something came along and wanted to eat this turtle, it would have a very difficult time getting through its shell. So that turtle can use its shell as an effective defense against being eaten. Now here's another example of an effective defense against being eaten. You might have to look very closely, but there's actually a gecko in this picture and it's hiding there on a log. You might be able to see its eyes as a giveaway. So can you think about why being difficult to find might be a good defense against being eaten? Here's another great example of where this insect looks very much like a leaf. Something that wants to eat it would have a very difficult time finding it in the first place. So it's an effective defense against being eaten. 
here's a great example of a very effective defense mechanism. Let's take a look at this skunk. So what kind of defenses does it have against predators? Well, skunks are not very difficult to see, that's for sure. They don't have shells or spikes that can protect them from predators. And they're also not very large. So you would maybe think that they're not very well defended against animals that might want to eat them, right? Well, if you know anything about skunks, you probably know that that isn't the case. Skunks can spray any potential predators with a very strong, unpleasant smell. And it's a very effective defense. So as you can perhaps see, there's many ways that plants and animal, animals use to avoid being eaten and many different structures that they do to do, use to do this. So for example, we have a sea urchin that has this very spiky structure on it that prevents many fish from wanting to eat it. Crabs have a very hard shell and they also have claws that they can use to keep um, potential predators away. Some plants, as we've looked at, have spikes, um, some even more um, harmful, harmful or difficult to get around than those cactuses. Other plants have more subtle structures, like in the bottom left here, this plant has kind of a fuzzy leaf to it that prevents um, insects from being able to eat it very effectively. Other plants, such as trees, can grow very tall, keeping away their leaves from would-be um, animals that would want to eat them. And you have this great example of the armadillo, which is able to curl up into a ball and use its um, hard skin to protect it from predators. So it's also important to remember that just because a plant or animal has defenses, does not mean that it'll never be eaten. So for example, even though trees can grow very tall um, to keep their leaves very high up from predators, animals such as giraffes can still get to them and eat. Or even in the case of that sea urchin with its very large spikes, um, some fish did not seem to mind and actually really enjoy eating them, such as this wolf fish. So I'm glad we got to talk today about plant and animal defenses. And um, next time you're outside, just remember to keep this in mind and think about how some of your favorite plants or animals might be using some of these structures to defend themselves against predators. So thank you very much and we'll see you next time.